When it comes to proper historical epics, time has proven that Ridley Scott has become like Mother Earth to us, and every Earth needs its four elephants to rest upon. Two of his in this particular genre are undoubtedly Gladiator and Kingdom of Heaven, and some might say the third one is the last duel. And did he just get the fourth one? Hey, I'm Robin, I love history, but I'm better watching movies, so here we talk about historical film and TV. And finally, we got to talk Napoleon. I just want to get out of the way while I was watching it. I got this special feeling that I'm watching a proper film, not even a movie, a film. It's that majestic. Like cinematography is flawless and lighting is one of the best ones I've ever seen for this scale. Some low lit shots and even night shots with a lot of commotions give you everything you need to see, no more, no less. I don't even need to talk about the costumes because it comes from a director who made The Duelist, a film that is set during Napoleonic Wars and the one that is praised for its historical accuracy, especially when it comes to military uniforms. The man clearly has passion for his craft. So if there is something to put under the microscope, it's definitely the story. It just takes on itself way too much. We are talking about the French Revolution period known as Reign of Terror right up until Napoleon's death in exile. I mean, sure, it's uh, 30 years give or take, but remember, we're not talking about the regular idle man here. And even if a few year jumps here and there are basically unavoidable, it's the actual choice of the events that get full coverage and the ones that just being brushed over for the sake of honoring the timeline, that's what really matters. Very risky business for this particular type of project. But hey, we all knew what we were getting into, at least those of us who saw the trailers. Luckily, I'm not gonna be the one to say that relationship between Napoleon and Josephine being at the core of the film and just driving it despite of all the politics and military stuff didn't work for me. It actually did. I really enjoyed that part. And you know, all of it would have been fine if there was those thoughts running through my head all the time while I was watching that I'm watching two different films. One of them being this choppy take on this European history and the rise and fall of Napoleon as a emperor and military commander and the second being this well-polished family drama that I do enjoy. But why do I enjoy it? Because of the big guns. Perfect casting is what saves the story. I mean, I love DiCaprio, but him as Napoleon? <sighs> Walking Phoenix, on the other hand? No doubt. He takes his performance, like, from the get-go somewhere from here, I felt. It just brings out that intelligence and thoughtfulness and intensity and brutality that's needed for the character. And behind all that, you can clearly see that vulnerable and at times insecure and awkward and often playful Corsican boy. Vanessa Kirby that I only know from Mission Impossible franchise blew me away with her dramatic chops here. She matches Joaquin head to head. When those two look at each other, the connection between them, you can pluck it if you choose to. Absolutely stellar supporting cast too. And, and I cannot even pick one. If I had to pick one, that would be Rupert Everett as a Duke of Wellington. Historical accuracy, yes, that's important, especially for the film like that. And I can already see the channels that specialize in that going to the full rage mode. But I wouldn't pick specifically on the accuracy of the battles because as the man said himself, How did you know were you there? What I would love to see more is the Battle of Borodino because it was a very defining moment of the war between Russian and French and the standoff between those two armies. Fun fact, there is a panoramic painting in Moscow by Franz Rubin that took him a year to complete. The battle is actually praised in Russian history. Even though French technically won the battle, they couldn't secure the decisive victory and Russian army retreated in quite orderly manner. There was even the talk of throwing Napoleon another battle before he reaches Moscow, but the Russian supplies didn't get to the army on time, and that's when the plan of abandoning Moscow and trapping Napoleon in empty city was born. It's sad, but, but it's genius. The battles we do get to see in full, though, I'd say Ridley Scott's best. The man just keeps evolving and it blows my mind. The complexity of the shots and the angles and the proper editing just made me feel like I'm watching something entirely 
fresh and nothing recycled and used because just because it's worked in in the past just fresh and if my friend you are a fan of dragoons and cuirassiers like me it's your lucky day ah and there are guns lots of guns now i obviously cannot speak for everybody's viewing experience but the theater i was in had this unified reaction by the end of it which was um silence but the good kind of sounds, the thoughtful one. I got the vibe actually that we all were trying to kind of place what we just saw into some emotional shelf within ourselves. I mean, we all people, we like categorizing stuff. So we do. Right now when the fog has somewhat settled for me, I can say that Napoleon is very engaging, brilliantly executed an actually heartfelt film, if not even a spectacle. Hell, it actually is a spectacle. But unfortunately, the one that is flawed by design. It just takes on itself a way too long and complex story to tell, and it feels disjointed at times as if some pieces were just missing during the assembly. It also tries two different outfits at the same time, basically splitting itself in two, leaving us this thin but very tangible emotional gap and the kind that we not necessarily as an audience want to fill in. If anything, I left with more questions than I got answers and my opinion, it leaves you wanting more. The question is how much more? <laughs>